Welcome to the Teacher's Impact Podcast, or better yet known as The Tip, where teachers can come to master their craft, use their voice, and enhance student learning. On this episode, I'll be reflecting on the past school year, some of my successes and challenges that I face this school year, and I want you to definitely do the same, so stay tuned for some of my lessons learned this year and my reflection. One thing I would like to talk about is that it is really important to reflect on our successes and lessons as educators because it helps us to grow, to move forward, and to become the best teachers that we can be in our field. So that's why reflecting is so important, and I really hope that you can reflect back on your past school year. My first memorable achievement this year is that in ELA slash reading. Based on the iReady scores in reading, the median score was 100%. So that means at least more than half of my class met their typical growth in reading. This was something that I wanted to accomplish this year, being that I'm somewhat new to iReady. I've only been doing it a couple, uh, two to three years. I'm familiar with this assessment. Uh, platform. So that was my goal this year and I was really proud of myself that I reached it and I was really proud of my students for reaching their goals this year. One other successful thing for this year was that my students really internalized growth mindsets. Did all my students internalize it? No, but I saw that a few of them or out of maybe 12 to 15 students, maybe Five to ten students really internalized the growth of mindset and this was really successful for me because when kids have a fixed mindset they tend to give up easily they don't want to try and it's very hard to get them to learn one other successful thing for this year is that I really told myself that I'm not going to push myself to burnout. I'm going to say no when I need to say no. If I do not want to participate in extracurricular activities, then I don't want to. And if I do, that's okay. But if I want to say no, I need to say no. And I did exactly that this year. Okay. And one of the things that helped me to really make sure that I had these successes was that I Before the school year started, I told myself, I'm going to see what type of kids I'm going to get. I'm going to see how the the personalities and the culture sets into the classroom. And then I'm going to go from there instead of going in with a preconceived notion of I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But really going in with an open mind, getting to know the students, seeing how they're going to gel together, seeing how their personalities are, seeing who can, seeing who I can push and who I can't push or who I need to push. So that was one of the things that helped. And as far as um, the students reaching their iReady goals, one of the things that I did with the whole class, I showed them exactly what they needed to get to. So in iReady, there's different colors. There's red, yellow, green, and the green with stripes. And I said to them as a class, if you're yellow, one of your goals needs to be to get to green. If you're red, one of your goals will need to be to get to yellow. And if you're green, you need to get to the green with the stripes. And they understood it in their simple terms. I teach first grade, and so I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. And after they finished their second assessment in in January, they were asking, oh, Miss O'Gilvie, did I go from the red to the yellow or did I go from the yellow to the green? They were really interested to see how they did. And that was one of the things that really helped to push them, make sure that they stayed focused during the test. Another thing that I did Before testing, I sent messages to parents letting them know that the students are going to be tested to help them to make sure that they get a good night's rest and to encourage them to stay focused. Did the parents do this? But I'm not sure. I figured the communication with the parents would not hurt. So the second thing in terms of um, implementing the growth mindset, I saw that students 
when when they were working with each other, they would tell them, oh, you need to have a growth mindset. When they saw that the other kids wanted to give up, that was one of the things that they were telling them. And it was really surprising to me that they really, they really, again, internalized it. And they were telling their classmates to have a growth mindset when they see that, when they saw that their classmates were giving up. For example, I had two little girls in my class we were working on a math problem and one of the little girls she had her head down on the table she was just giving up she didn't want to do it the other little girl is she's really good in math and they they you they usually help each other and the one little girl said to her oh, you, you need to have a growth mindset I know you can do this and the other little girl she put her head up and she started trying and they worked out the problem together and came with a solution for themselves. So the impact on the students, I saw that it was really helpful for them. I can think of other examples. Another successful thing that I implemented was my class dojo, and not just class dojo points that I gave to the students, but I incorporated gaming into it. So for every level that the student reached, they could get a prize and so the levels were really difficult to get to you had a level one a level two a level three level four so the students really had to earn that prize from the treasure box that they needed to get and i saw that they were really excited when they reached their level when somebody else reached their level they clapped for them they were excited for them so that was really great to see that they were cheering each other on Sometimes it was a little bit difficult because they were like, oh, well, how did this child get so many points? And I explained to them what that child did to get those points and how they themselves can get to that point so they can reach do- reach their goal. And so it was really helpful because it wasn't just I'm randomly giving points. I'm giving points for them to earn towards something. They can see the number of points that they have. It's very visual and I'm addressing and teaching the behaviors that I want to see in the classroom. So that was very successful. One of the things that was challenging with that, I think I made the points too high. So I had to adjust the points in the middle of the year so that some kids could actually reach the points because I, at the beginning, I only had one or two or three kids reaching the points. So I had to adjust them to make it more reasonable for them to reach the points that they earn so that they can go into the treasure box and as far as for the challenges this year one of the challenges I had was that I had a lot of boys compared to girls I had about 12 boys to three girls and as you know boys are very kinesthetic they're very active so it was a challenge at the time it was a challenge at the time to keep pace with them, to keep active with them. I did incorporate a lot of movement and competition as far as class dojo and having a balance between them being boys and, you know, playing together and being excited and showing, you know, their personality as boys is different from girls. So, and I had to keep that into consideration, but also managing the classroom. So I guess if I could find a way to, you know, make make sure that the boys are feeling comfortable the whole time that they're meeting all of their needs as boys, because it's very hard to be in a classroom for eight hours for young boys because they need to move and to be around. So I'm going to be looking for some strategies to deal with or some professional development to deal with you know adjusting to adjusting boys to the classroom more to making sure that they feel comfortable they can be themselves but again it's still organized and they're still learning another challenge that i had was i was feeling at the end of the day i was feeling very drained and very tired so i had to you know really think about i had to get you know my go to the doctor, get, you know, do a checkup to see exactly what was going on because I was feeling unusually tired uh, at the end of the day. 
And the teaching is very tiring, as you know, but for some reason I was feeling extra tired. So I got my lab work done and I'm working on what I need to work on to get my energy. I've been exercising and going to the gym and that's helped a little bit. But I'm hoping, you know, with the changes that I made in terms of my health, I can have more energy for the next school year coming up. I wanted to also talk about just some things that I've heard for students that really made me think this is why I became a teacher. And, uh, you know, some of the stories and things that they used to tell me during the year and how how they enjoyed the classroom or, you know, what could we change or what could we work on as a class. Just insights um, from students about their experiences So at the end of the year, I did have students tell me what they wish my teacher knew. Again, I teach first grade, so the answers were very few and far between, but I had some students that were honest and could articulate exactly what it is that they wanted me to know. And one of the students wrote, I wish my teacher knew that I try my best. And I always tell them, try your best, try your best. As long as you try your best, I'm okay. I just need you to try because I see that students now, it's very hard for them to just put something down on the paper. And at the end of the year, when I saw that that this little boy wrote this, I was like, wow, was I pushing them too hard? But I thought about it and I said, well, that's what he thinks. So... I just have to be mindful of the fact that there are some students trying their best and maybe I just need to back up a little bit and give them some time. One story I wanted to tell was I have a little girl and she she was reading at the end of the year, but I had another little girl who was not reading completely at the end of the year and they were sitting together. They had some free time for a little bit. And the one little girl, she said to me, oh, Miss Ogilvy, I'm teaching my classmate how to read because she's not reading it. And she was writing CVC words, consonant, vowel, consonant words down on the paper for her to read. She got a book. She was helping her to sound out the words. And it was just so beautiful to see that she was trying to help her to learn how to read. And at the beginning of the year, the little girl who was helping the other little girl how to read, she was very reluctant and she didn't want to do it. And it was a struggle. But in the end, she was reading. And when she was when she once she learned how to read, she wanted to help her friend learn how to read. And I must say, the kids this year were really helpful with each other. They when they saw that somebody needed help, they would help them. They were very kind. If they saw that someone didn't have something, they would share it with them. So that was just really beautiful to see from them. All right. So one of the things that um, I would like for you to do also as a teacher is to do your own reflection as an educator. The experiences that you've had throughout this year or even past years. And some of the questions you can think about were, What were your proudest moments this year? What challenges did you overcome and how did they shape your teaching? And in what ways have you grown personally and professionally? So those are some questions to think about to help you reflect on the past of school year. And so another thing I wanted to say is that it is so important to use the reflections to plan for the future. I will be using my reflections to plan for the future. Again, those plans are going to be tentative because I'm going to adjust to the students that are coming into my classroom for next year. But make sure that you're using those reflections to help you grow and to develop and to become a better. Another thing that you can also do is to set some goals based on those reflections. So I know that for next year, one of my goals will be to make sure that I'm keeping my energy up based on how I felt this past school year so what are some of the things that I'm going to do to help me keep my energy up that's you know maintaining my exercise regimen making sure that I'm drinking water and staying hydrated and getting enough sleep so those are just some ideas of how I'm using my reflections to help me plan and to help me set some goals for the following school year 
Okay, some key points, some key takeaways from this episode was to make sure that you reflect on your challenges and your successes as a teacher because those challenges and successes are going to help you grow and to help you move forward and to become better professionally. And I also want you to not only look at the professional side, but to look at the personal side because I do feel that they coincide and that they mesh together. And we can separate them at times, but most of the time they come together and they make us into the teacher who we are. Okay. I also want to encourage you to continue reflecting on your experiences as educators and to celebrate your successes because those are the things that keep us going for the many, many years that we're teachers. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please be sure to like, share, and favorite, and to subscribe on any podcast platform. Happy learning and growing.